Lord, who forgives all our sin. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made, and you forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Shout out, do not hold back, lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways. As if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments, they delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast? but you do not see. Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose, a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose? To loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? when you see the naked to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicators shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help and he will say, here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt you shall rise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. The word of the Lord.
reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry, but as servants of God we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. 
for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. May I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Pray to your Father in heaven, says Jesus to his disciples, but not like that. Give alms to the poor, says Jesus to his disciples, but not like that. Fast. Prophet Isaiah says to the people, keep the rituals and feast days and fasting days that have been set for you by the Lord, but not like that. Go to church and worship, your priest says to you. Observe Ash Wednesday and begin a Holy Lent, but not like that. Not like anything you have done probably before. I find in the texts as we approach them this year a congenial bewilderment that perhaps you might share with me as we face a Lent beginning again when I know I've heard people say it feels like last year's Lent never ended. It got interrupted. 2020 happened. Here we are. Not much has changed. And we have before us a day that asks us to think about immortality, that says again and again in the liturgy, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. And we mark it on our foreheads with literal ashes so that we don't forget. The cross of ashes marked on our foreheads is reminiscent of the cross of oil placed on our heads in baptism. In baptism, the cross represents a beginning, a gateway to a new life, part of a new community, a new family, membership, and the living body of Christ throughout the ages. The church, past, 
present and future. The oil is placed in the form of a cross on the forehead with the words, your name first, that is specified in the liturgy. It must be your name first. You are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. And the seal that is placed upon each of us in baptism is indelible. It is irrevocable, indissoluble. Choose any word you want to stand in for permanent, and it will do. It cannot be revoked. It cannot be lost. This relationship and this community and this new life that we enter into when that cross is placed on our foreheads in baptism. So what are we doing then marking that same place? with a cross of ash, a symbol of death. We did not need 2020 to remind us, as it so vividly has done, that life and death are intertwined, and that we cannot have one and escape the other. And yet, Lent, Ash Wednesday, the cross of ash, the invitation to reflect on mortality, all of these things, even after a year like 2020, are messengers and pointers to hope. They do point to death, but that is not where they stop pointing. Ash Wednesday, like baptism, is the beginning of a pathway. It is the first step on a journey that will take us somewhere. And like baptism, the journey that we begin on Ash Wednesday is one that will ask something of us. It may ask many things of us before we reach our destination. The destination of Ash Wednesday, of course, is the cross. And we walk from here through the next six weeks of Lent a journey that Christ walked before us and taught us how to walk, and we walk alongside him as we read again the stories of his ministry and his choice again and again to put aside the power that was rightly his as the Son of God and instead to humble himself, to eat alongside the broken, to feed the hungry, to extend companionship, relationship and community to those whom society was perfectly okay with tossing aside. This is the journey that we're asked to follow. And so when Jesus says to his disciples and the followers, pray like this, but not like that. And the prophet says to the Israel, the people of Israel, fast and follow the rituals that God has set for you, but not like that. We are being asked to hear that the outer actions that our faith calls us to are not simply actions that we go through as if they mean nothing, but they are pointing to an inward grace. And God asks us to acknowledge that grace and live into it, even as we embody the things that our faith asks of us. To pray in our hearts as well as with our mouths to fast with our bodies as well as our spirits, to partake in a fast, as the prophet says, that leads to justice. Fasting from things that contribute to the ills of our society. What can we give up? What can we put to death that would bring freedom, peace, justice, safety, dignity, and healing to the world around us. Life and death are intertwined. That is the way of Jesus, the way of love, the way of the cross. And so as we prepare in a moment to put ashes on our foreheads once again, tracing 
the cross of oil placed on our heads in baptism. I hope that we hear in our hearts an invitation to a holy Lent, yes, but an invitation to recenter ourselves in the identity that Christ gives us in our baptism. And to walk along through Lent, considering, listening to the Holy Spirit, praying deeply, and examining with God holding us in his hands, what is it in our hearts, in our lives, in our communities that needs to walk with us to the way of the cross and be put to death there? Because it is by putting those things to death that we find that the cross is the path of life. And that is what we point to when we put the cross on our foreheads. Amen. people of God. The first Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and it became the custom of the church to prepare for them by a 
season of penitence and fasting. This season of Lent provided a time in which converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when those who, because of notorious sin, had been separated from the body of the faithful were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to the fellowship of the church. Thereby, the whole congregation was put in mind of the message of pardon and absolution set forth in the gospel of our Savior and of the need which all Christians continually have to renew their repentance and faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church, to the observance of a holy Lent, by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word, and to make a right beginning of repentance and as a mark of our mortal nature, let us now kneel before the Lord, our Maker and Redeemer. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence, that we may remember that it is only by your gracious gift that we are given everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. I invite those who wish to receive ashes to please come forward. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return.
Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. We confess to you, Lord, our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people. We confess to you, Lord, our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. We confess to you, Lord, our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work. We confess to you, Lord. Our negligence in prayer and worship, and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. We confess to you, Lord. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our for all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Lord. For our waste and pollution of your creation, and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Favor we hear of. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation. That we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord. Bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desires not the death of sinners, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live, has given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardons and absolves all those who truly repent and with sincere hearts believe his holy gospel. Therefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, and that those things which please him which we do on this day, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Bow down before the Lord. Look with compassion, O Lord, upon this your people that rightly observing this holy season, they may learn to know you more fully and to serve you with a more perfect will. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
love and serve the Lord.